This is what we call an intake tower. This is water, where water is drawn from the dam, gravitated to the water treatment works. And what you're seeing here are the off ticks. This uh, blue thing is mm -hmm. the pipe. This, this is a pipe. Yeah. But then takes we have the uh, this takes you, this takes what draws the water mm -hmm. into the transmission pipes mm -hmm. at the bottom of the tunnel, mm -hmm. all the way to the water treatment works about uh, mm -hmm. three kilometers away. There are about four optics. We have the first one above here. This is the second one. But behind this wall, what you're seeing here, are screens in every opening at every intake. Their role is to ensure silt from the bottom or floating materials from the surface are not ingested into the pipes. What you're seeing here is uh, concrete, what you can see is concrete, but inside that concrete are pipes which are embedded and they are the ones transmitting water to the treatment works, the environmental flow, and probably you do need to score the dam. That is where the pipes so are. So from here, this water ends up in a water treatment plant? Exactly. I, I hope you're going there. We're going there, we're okay. going to see it. I've locked it uh, so that guests cannot come in. Yeah? For security purposes. Uh -huh. This is a secure area. Very secure. We have uh, security all through day and night. Uh -huh. and we ensure that nobody gets in here because it's a high security installation. And it's uh, too risky. Someone can Very mess risky. up. Yeah. 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 Anybody accessing this uh -huh. can cause damage to the dam. The water purification process begins here. It starts with coagulation and flocculation. These are what are called vertical bubbles, where we have uh, water uh, running over one above one plate but goes under another one. And this is basically to just uh, slowly agitate the water so that you can have the formation of rocks. And of course, uh, giving the water enough time to form uh, those frogs before we let the water get into the sedimentation tank. So these are actually called vertical bubbles. And in this case, we have used uh, galvanized uh, steel plates uh, to come up with those bubbles. Here, particles suspended in water like clay, sand, and some larger organic particles such as algae have an inherent electric charge that causes them to repel each other. These particles are neutralized by coagulants, which are chemicals with an opposing electric charge that promote the formation of flocks from the individual particles. If you look at the water, the dam may look very clear, very clear but it contains suspended matter which is, uh, could, be, uh, uh, could be plant matter or could be chemical matter and uh, it is suspended within the water but in very tiny particles which we would not be able to remove and we have to find a way of congregating them together or congregating them together so that they can gain some way to be able to uh, drop at the bottom of the uh, sedimentation tank by gravity. Then it passes through sedimentation. We are, we are decanting this water from the top, taking the cleanest. Heavy flock particles quickly sink to the tank's bottom as the water rises. 
clarified water flows upward into collection troughs. As slowly spinning scraper blades continuously remove the combined sludge and sand layer from the bottom of the tank. This when it settles down is uh, removed by that pump continuously. You are saying this thing is the one that moves? This moves, you, these are rails, you see? Yeah. Yes, can. yes, this moves. So it uses electricity? To it uses electricity. But you can't see it? You can't see it move because it moves very well, slowly. I'm, I'm yeah. here now, right now it's not it. moving. Yeah, that's what I was checking from that boat. Oh, it's, it's not moving because we, there's not, very little to remove. At this stage, water already looks clear and a lot less cloudy. In order to address the microscopic taste and odor causing substances, ozonation and filtering will now be used. They may include dangerous bacteria or viruses as well as inorganic substances like iron or sulfur. To get rid of the oxidized particles and any other impurities that could still be present, the water moves onto the filtration stage. It passes through a thick stratified bed of micro sand and activated carbon granules. These are called the rapid sand filters where we use sand to filter out any remaining uh, suspended matter on the water from the sedimentation tank. Uh, this is a special sad, not just any sad, but graded uh, such that uh, we have finer, you know, finer particles as we come up. And uh, when water passes through these layers of sand, the suspended remaining uh, particles are actually removed from the water. And from this point, that water is then disinfected. The filtered water flows to the final disinfection in the UV tank. It passes through banks of ultraviolet light. UV light at various wavelengths can destroy or disrupt viral, bacterial or other pathogens DNA or cellular structure effectively destroying them. From here, the water is now ready for public consumption. It flows here, the underground water storage tank. This tank has the capacity of holding 70,000 cubic meters of water a day. If it were not for this dam, the, the life in Wiro Town would be, uh, would be hell. But now, uh, thanks to uh, the dam, because now about 30,000 cubic meters of water is being supplied to the people of Wiro Town. In the same context, uh, it is a, actually uh, a clarion call that our rivers are dry. If it were not for this storage, even the river Kalimeno itself, downstream, upstream of the dam, there's, there's no water. That's why it is taking a lot of time to fill. This issue of climate change, we need to approach it with water storage, water storage, water storage. My name is Enoxicolia and this is the Kenyan Historian.